did have many expectations to fulfill when we opened here 20 years ago. The community had been waiting for a new Hebrew home for a long time. It was a Cecil B. DeMille project. I mean, it took more than 10 years, a cast of thousands, millions of dollars in the making to create um, this facility here on Abrams Boulevard. But I don't think the community was quite prepared for how much we would not only meet the expectations they had, but help them to understand that there were many more expectations of older adults that we could and had to meet. And that goes back to our commitment to providing services in homes and in the community. I think we're known as a leader because we're mission driven. Everybody who walks through that door each day knows what we're about. They know why we're here. Um, longevity. Has, has certainly been um, a strong point for us, obviously. And yet the mission, even though the mission has remained constant over the years, it's a dynamic mission. So we've been able to really evolve from a small home for the aged all the way to a complete continuum of geriatric services. And that's exciting. Uh, Hebrew healthcare is known to be family oriented. Um, I, I saw that from the time that my father first came to Hebrew Healthcare, uh, the whole staff uh, cared about my mother when she was visiting them every day. Uh, they were kind and caring to my father. Uh, all his needs were taken care of. Uh, they made it comfortable for my mother and for my brother and I when we went to visit him. There would be no doubt in my mind that if somebody asked where should I go in the community for services that I would recommend Hebrew Healthcare. When I think about Hebrew Healthcare, I think about high quality, I think about competence, I think about incredible follow through, um, complete trust in the facility. My mother-in-law was in Boston and needed to go to a nursing home and we wanted her here. I knew where I wanted her to go. But my sister-in-law, who has a PhD in psychology and is a professor at UNC Chapel Hill, said to me that she was going to research the best place in Hartford for her mother to come. So knowing her, I just shut up and let her do her research. She called me excited one day and she said, there's only one place in Hartford that has a wonderful rating, and that's Hebrew Healthcare. Do you know about that? And I said, yes, I know about that. That's where I was going to suggest. I like taking care of aged people, and I like being a teacher of medicine. I like being a member of a team. I have long since put aside the hurtful notion that the doctor is the apex and the sole source of knowledge, wisdom, and help for old people in trouble. In this facility, we don't only have the words, we have the reality. That the nurse, the social worker, the physician, the trainee, the rehab therapist, the rec therapist, the pharmacist, all have helpful roles to play and have an opportunity to teach one another when we confer on the case of a patient or when we sit together with a patient and family to cover difficult decisions. At Hebrew Healthcare, it's consistent. It's top quality. Families, family members taking care of family members over generations. 20 years ago, everything was very different in healthcare in general, in long-term care. It was really about our residents and how we take care of our residents. Nowadays, it's about the residents who live in the place where we work. For dementia care, that means it's how can we best meet their needs in the least restrictive environment, in the most compassionate of ways, with the most love to really focus on the residents still living life. With life enrichment, it includes people who prefer solitude. It includes you know, taking care of orchids in our greenhouse. It includes taking care of the dog that we have now, you know, and, and having a dog sit on your feet while you're watching television. Or it includes just having someone read a spiritual prayer to you or your favorite Emily Dickinson poem. 
It includes having the kids calm and, and listening to those noises of kids playing happily. And it includes a lot more of a home-like feel. Um, Hebrew healthcare has a very interesting history. About a hundred years ago, a group of women felt strongly that there should be care for the elderly, above and beyond what can be done at home. And they started a nickel brigade, collecting nickels, dimes, quarters, and then some. And they were able to create the first Hebrew home. The quality of a, of a community is based on its health care. And with the point of view of Jewish ethics, uh, we have to care for our elderly. You know, Hebrew health care's history is the history of volunteers. We were started by a handful of dedicated women. Nobody told them they needed to or had to. Nobody paid them anything to do it. But they had an idea that there was a need in the community and they were going to meet it. The founding mothers and sisters of this great institution would be enormously proud today because the vision is consistent with their original plans. We have created an institution of love and caring and nurturing. And that was true over a hundred years ago, and that is true today. The leadership of the Hebrew Home and Hebrew Healthcare has really been a marathon. People get involved here for life. Although I may only look 26 years old, I've been on the board for almost 50 years. Oh, not quite, about 40 years. And my father, before me, was on the board and the executive committee for over 50 years. This is a marathon. Uh, the, the needs of our community and the needs of our institution continue each and every day, every hour. And we must be ever vigilant and ever passionate about its multiple needs. But the home is different because if we don't take care of the frail elderly, there is no one else. Generations of people in this community have uh, been committed to Hebrew healthcare at extraordinarily intense levels because for generations on generations, we've serviced the elderly and their families um, doing spectacular work, doing what I consider to be God's work. I have a very personal view about why people should, uh, people in this community should support this institution. Um, I think they should want to, on the one hand, and I think they're obliged to, on the other. Well, I think it's a, an ethical, moral obligation, back to the Ten Commandments of uh, honor thy father and mother, and um, I think we all, all of us who have been involved for so many years and decades, uh, take that to heart, and it does have meaning to us, and uh, we want to carry out that responsibility. So uh, we, we feel uh, that it's very important to, to make sure that the elderly in the community are cared for and have the appropriate dignity of life in their later years. This place is just so important in the lives of so many people and touches so many people that the leaders feel very passionate about what we do, about our mission, uh, and about our ability to continue that mission going forward. For a place like this to survive, it needs significant, substantial, continued philanthropy. And that's why we call upon this community who've always answered the call and I have no doubt they're going to continue to answer the call.